St. John's. Welcome to worship on this beautiful morning. I don't remember a time when I've seen a drought as much as we had turned around in uh, such a short time and so completely as uh, in the past week. So it's good to see the green grass again. Just want to welcome everyone who's here in the pews again this morning and also those of you watching at home. We're glad to have, we're glad to be together in any way that we can and hope everyone's doing well. For in-person worship, we'll be following the same procedures and guidelines that we had in place when we started back at the end of June. So we'll just do everything the same way we did then. We're excited for the arrival of Pastor Ken and Yvonne Gibson as they will be moving to the parsonage the last week of September. Please remember them in your prayers as they prepare to be with us here at St. John's. Sunday, September 27th, will be the last day for Pastor Steve. We will have an outdoor reception for him and Kelly immediately following worship. We hope you'll plan to attend and say thank you and goodbye at this time and uh, want them to know they will be missed. We extend our congratulations to our own Wartburg Seminary graduate, Maria Bonine, who received a letter of call from St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church of America in Altamont, Illinois. Maria will be ordained here at St. John's on October 12th, right here in our sanctuary. And she will start at her new church on October 16th. We thank God for you, Pastor Maria. It has a good sound to it. Each day at 5 p.m., the youth continue to pray for our nation. You are welcome to join them. Check St. John's Facebook page for more information. For the 9 a.m. Sunday virtual worship services, we will start Zoom login and Facebook Live at 8.50 a.m. each Sunday. So at 8.50, those will go online. Thank you for your patience with this. And again, thank you for your continued financial support of the ministry here at St. John's through your gifts, tithes, and offerings during this COVID crisis. We appreciate your faithfulness, and we are very blessed. This time, Pastor will lead us in worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. God hears the cries of all who are in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Let, led, led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen.
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading is written in Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. 
Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Please stand with me as we welcome the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything, and out of pity for him. The Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. 
Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Lord, give us open ears to hear you, open minds to understand you, and open hearts to receive you. We ask this for Jesus' sake. Amen. How often should I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me. I think forgiveness is one of the, 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 the places where a lot of us stumble, one of the places where a lot of us don't, don't get what Jesus is trying to tell us. Peter says, Lord, I'm willing to, re- to forgive my brother or sister seven times. Isn't that great? The rabbis, as I've understood it, uh, the, most of the rabbinical literature of the time said that you, that you have to forgive three times. If you, if, you've not, if, you, if you forgive three times and still there's no reconciliation, then you, then you don't have to, uh, you don't have to uh, pay attention to forgiveness anymore. So Peter thought he was being generous. I'm ready to forgive seven times. Jesus says, wait a minute, wait a minute Peter, 77 times. Now I, I say to Jesus, hold on. Hold on a, a minute here. Forgiveness, I think, is countercultural. Forgiveness runs against, against the grain of, of, most of many of the messages, if not most of the messages, we hear about human relationships. One of the, uh, of the popular T-shirt slogans, I haven't seen it lately, but a few years ago, one of the, popul- the popular T-shirt slogans was, don't get mad, get even. Don't get mad, get even. If you, you probably have seen or heard that one. Another one that I, that I just absolutely loved, not, was the one that said, kill them all and let God sort them out. Revenge fantasies. Uh, if, you, if you pay attention to movies, if you pay attention to TV shows, a lot of, our TV, a lot of what we have in popular culture is about revenge. It's about, it's about letting our anger loose on someone who's, who's wronged us. It's about, uh, it's, it's about taking vengeance on the bad guy. And the good guy is always the one who is, who is, uh, who, who is driven to doing acts of violence because so many acts of violence have been done to him. So, so forgiveness, forgiveness has very little, little room in our popular culture. I think forgiveness is countercultural. We hear the story of Joseph this morning. Joseph, whose brothers threw him in a pit and, and were going to leave him for dead, and then decided, no, we'll sell him into slavery. We'll get some money for him. Joseph, whose brothers uh, all rejected him. Didn't Joseph, when he, was, he, he became Pharaoh's right-hand man in Egypt, didn't Joseph have the right to take vengeance on his brothers? Didn't Joseph have the right to exact to exact revenge? How do I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Jesus says, forgive 77 times, or 70 times 7 times, as some of the translations have it. How do we do that? How do we do that? How do we lay aside our anger? How do we lay aside our, 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 need, for, for, for our need for vengeance? How do we lay aside our our impulse to revenge? I think we have to be honest about our anger and honest about the wrong that was done. Joseph and his brothers were honest about about the wrong that was done to him. His brothers and his brothers repented. His brothers asked for mercy, as did the the the, the slaves in the story. We'll get back to to the idea of repentance in a minute, but. Uh, But we have to be honest, we have to name in order to get past our anger, I think we have to name it. I think we have to name the wrong that is is done. 
And we have to leave room, this is very important, we have to leave room for repentance. We have to leave room for repentance. I think repentance is the first step to to forgiveness. In order to repent, though, I have to lay aside my self-centeredness. I have to lay aside my defensiveness. I have to lay aside my 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 claim to to revenge, my claim to my anger. I have to lay aside that which that that which which alienates me from my sister or my brother. I have to realize God's claim on me. That's what Jesus' parable is about. Jesus' parable is about God's claim on on us. Jesus' parable says that that the in the first instance the slave who owed the master money owed him over a billion dollars. 10,000 talents is well over in our money. It's well over a billion dollars. No slave could repay that debt. No slave could repay that debt. So to, to have that debt be, it's deliberately absurd. It's deliberately, it's deliberately an enormous amount of money. And for the, for the master to repay, re, the master to forgive, that debt was huge. Now the, the, the slave whose debt was forgiven meets another slave who owes him 100 denarii. Now, 100 denarii, one denarius was about a day's wages for a laborer. So it was a big debt, but not, that, but, but not unmanageable. And he refuses, to, to, uh, he refuses to forgive his fellow servant, even though, he's, even though his master has just forgiven him. And that's the key. I think that's the key to what our Lord means about, about repentance, and about forgiveness. We, we realize God's claim on our lives. We realize that God has forgiven us the immense debt that, that our sin creates, the immense gulf, the immense alienation that, that our sins have created between us and God. In order for forgiveness to operate, we need to realize our, God's claim on us. What did Joseph do in in this story in the Old Testament? What did Joseph do with his brothers? He said, you intended evil, but God intended good. God saw the wider purpose, Joseph saw the wider purposes of God at work in his brother's actions. He set aside his anger, he set aside his his desire for for revenge. He set aside the, the vengeance that he could have very easily have wreaked on his brothers in order to to allow God's purposes to be worked out. Joseph says, God's purposes are being worked out in that I'm now reconciled to my brothers and I now now can care for my brothers. Instead of killing my brothers, instead 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 of condemning them to death, I can now nurture and and keep and allow my brothers to prosper and allow the people of God to prosper. Joseph set aside his anger. He set aside his his right to revenge in order to allow God's purposes to work out. Can we set aside our anger? Can we, realizing that, that we have been forgiven so much through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus, can we set aside our self-centeredness, our, our, our selfishness, our, our need for revenge, our anger? Can we set those aside and, and, and open up the, the path of repentance? Open up the path of repentance. Repentance is part of the, is part of the dynamic, certainly part of the dynamic of forgiveness. In order to be forgiven, I have to be able to repent. I have to be able to, to, to have sorrow for my sins. I have to be able to let go of my, of my self-centeredness and my false sense of superiority. Our Lord Jesus calls us to a different kind of humanity, to a different kind of a world, to the world of the kingdom where, where, where vengeance is set aside, to the world of the kingdom where, where we are open to both pronouncing forgiveness and, and opening our hearts to repentance a new kind of humanity, a new and different kind of a world. Whenever I talk about forgiveness, whenever I think about forgiveness, I I think about my own family. I think about the the, the car accident 
that killed my father. My father was, uh, was on his way, ironically, on his way to do a good thing. My father was on his way with a, with a trunk full of groceries for a needy family. And in the process of, of doing that, as he was just driving down the street, minding his own business, out of the alley came, a, came another car uh, driven by someone who we later learned was, was fleeing another, another car accident, was, was, was fleeing another, another uh, was fleeing from the police and T-boned my father and, and he died of his injuries. The Sunday after that happened, my mother got up in church and in, that, in the church that, that, they, that they attended, they had a free prayer time where anybody could, could ask for prayer. My mother stood up in church, asked for prayer for the young man who caused the accident, asked for prayer for his family. And, as, and I wasn't there, but I, I heard that, that, that she had said that the, that, the, that, the, that the people who investigated my father's accident referred to this young man who caused it as scum, they referred to him as scum, and my, mo- and my mother said, that boy is not scum. That boy is a child of God. That boy's family are children of God, and I ask you to pray for all of them. I saw my mother at that point modeling that new humanity, that humanity that lives not for vengeance, not, not for revenge, but lives for grace, that lives, that lives under the banner of of Christ's forgiveness of our sins. How often should I forgive my brother or sister or sister who sins against me? Not not three times, not seven times, but 77 times. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies and Sunday schools, confirmation classes, and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth. 
The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have showed us faithfulness, for the knees that taught us how to bow to you and the tongues that taught us to praise you. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. He will stay close beside me all the way. When at last I come to die, he will take me home loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.